as most of you know at this point, Friesland, the Dutch DACA, has sailed back into Legends and is available for global XP. But a destroyer without torpedoes, hmm, is she really worth your hard-earned global? Well, stick around, let's find out. Yes. End of video. Friesland is worth your global XP. But today, I'm going to give you five reasons why I think so. And there are lots of other things to consider that I'm going to throw in towards the end of the video, so stick around for that. But first of all, let's set up this gameplay. Hotspot. And myself and my div mates, Mo and Curly, are headed straight into BCAP to contest. And this game, while pretty silly at times, is a banger and shows what this DACA machine can do. So, my build. There are two great builds right now that I think I would recommend to you, depending on your playstyle and uh, what you like to do. One, my initial build was Yerzy Swirsky. Because, well, when this ship came out, we didn't have anyone else we could turn to, and Swirsky turned Friesland into a beast of a gunboat. But now we have another option in the form of a certain pan-European George Dewey, and that is Konrad Helfrich. So, what do we get out of each of them? Yerzy. The gun reload, 1.4. Decent fire chance. AA DPS is, of course, respectable. Speed, 26. There's our rudder. Concealment, 5, 7, and 2 of each consumables. Now, by switching over to Konrad Helfrich, we lose a little bit of the reload, but two tenths of a second. Is it really going to matter? What we gain, though, 10% fire chance, higher AA DPS. Two and a half knots faster, a better rudder, slightly worse concealment, but we get three of all of these wonderful consumables that we're going to cover in more detail later on in this video. Now, the one thing this information on the screen here doesn't quantify is the use of perceptive that you would get with Yersi Swirsky, and that is arguably the strongest perk in the game you could have on a DD gunboat. It shows the location of the nearest enemy ship. So if you run Swirsky, you will have a large advantage in that aspect of it. The choice is yours. Right now, I'm running Helfrich, and I'm enjoying that extra speed AA and fire chance, but there's really no wrong answer here as I see it. Do what you like. All right, straight into it, guys. Number one reason I think Friesland is worth getting for global XP, raw damage output. Friesland ranks in first place for tier 7 destroyer damage output for HE and AP shells. But wait, there's more. <laughs> it nearly outpaces every legendary destroyer as well, with gearing just barely winning here. In fact, in terms of HE DPM, Friesland is on the top 10 list in the entire game at the moment. Again, keep in mind, it's a destroyer. We have Colbert, Des Moines, Wusta. Cleveland, Susie, Gearing, Friesland. So, this is a very powerful ship indeed, with these four little guns. Number two, anti-aircraft. This game is a perfect example of Friesland's AA prowess, as we make short work of the enemy German CV's squadrons. If the enemy CV doesn't know at the beginning of a match about Friesland's AA, they will soon figure it out. You do not want to focus on a Friesland with your aircraft carrier squadrons. Stock damage per second output is the best by miles when it comes to tier 7 destroyers. Akazuki is really the only one that comes close, and it's about half of the damage output. On top of that, the Friesland shares the best stock AA range for destroyers of 5.2 kilometers, a title shared with the Udaloi and the ZF-6. Most destroyers in the game are at the mercy of getting focused by enemy CVs. Friesland breaks the mold there, and usually I start smiling when I see an enemy carrier on the other team. Now, at this point in the game, I was quite convinced that my div mates were sabotaging me. <laughs> and I can't preface enough that we were kind of just goofing around and having fun. And so keep that in mind when it comes to this gameplay and still what we pull off here at the end. Number three, sonar. Friesland has hydroacoustic search and a ship detection range of 4.4 kilometers. This is a very powerful offensive and defensive tool. 
If used correctly, in proximity of an enemy destroyer, you can quickly trap them with the old 1-2 sonar smoke combination and leave them helplessly at your mercy. Exhibit A. This gearing wandered a little bit too close and we were able to trap him without him being able to detect me while I gun him down from the safety of my smokescreen. On top of that, you can see enemy torpedoes at 3.1 kilometers and avoid dying while sitting in your long-lasting smokescreen. The sonar lasts 96 seconds and with your Conrad Helfrick build, you could have three such sonars at your disposal. With this sonar, you can confidently push caps, screen torpedoes for your team, and so much more. Number 4. American Smoke Screens As we all know, in World of Warship Legends, American Destroyers are blessed with the best smoke screens in the game. The smoke is going to last over 2 minutes. That is a plus. You have 2 minutes of relative protection to farm damage, protect friendly ships, teammates, etc. And again, with Conrad Helfrick, you get three of them, meaning in a match you could spend nearly half of the match obscured by smoke if you so desired. Number 5. Uniqueness As I said in my recent breakdown of the Ulland, the Swedish Tier 6 Premium Destroyer, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out, the things I look for in ships nowadays are unique features that set them apart from other ships in the game. And while I don't have every ship in the game, there are probably over 300 to choose and play at this point. So I look for things that make a ship different. Friesland offers a very unique gameplay style with the sonar smoke combination, the blazing fast reload of 1.5 seconds, and the crown jewel, the ridiculous AA. Friesland is hilariously fun and can leave you with a smile on your face. Now, after those five things, I have to say, it's not all unicorns and rainbows. This can be a challenging ship to play as well. You do not have walls of skill to hide behind, and that can make things challenging even for the best destroyer captains. On that note, your carry potential is a little lackluster for that exact reason. If enemy battleships or cruisers decide to push you, you run. <laughs> there is no dev strikes that you're going to pull off in the Friesland, and your ability to stop a push can be laughable at times. On top of that, you can be at the mercy of your teammates for spotting if you decide to play from island cover or from your smoke cover. And as we know, this can lead to some frustrating situations at times if you do not have adequate support. As an open water gunboat, the Conrad Helfrick build will help a little bit, but your top speed still isn't going to be Soviet or French-esque, so you're going to be an easy target to hit. When you're kiting away, although your guns swivel a full 360 degrees, Friesland's rear firing angles are not all that amazing. And if you begin to angle away from enemy shells, you can cut your damage output immediately in half. So kiting isn't necessarily the best gameplay style in the Friesland. Now, of course, you still have that smoke to rely on, right? Well, here's my beef with that. I think the Friesland can promote some very bad playstyle habits. One, because setting fires to ships and farming from cover sometimes has very little impact on who actually wins or loses a game. This is the reason I generally run Perceptive and try to hunt and kill enemy destroyers. It could easily sway the balance of a match by getting an enemy DD out of there. Whereas you could sit in cover from your smokescreen or behind an island for 5 minutes farming battleships, end up with 100k damage, but during that time you're not spotting, contesting caps, hunting DDs, or doing other things that really win games. Instead, you might end up with some good damage numbers, but during that time, the red battleships have killed off part of your team and are now rushing you. So, guess you can keep that in mind when deciding between Swirsky and Onrad. Now, let's check back into this game. The enemy Flander did what a Flander does best, turned itself into a high-speed baguette and rammed my div mate. Now the Brandenburg is barely hanging on by a thread, and that's leaving me with a difficult decision. I'm going to have to risk it all to try to kill him. Luckily, our uh, friendly Kaga came in clutch and left him on just a scrape of health, so I'm going to pop out, see if I can gun him down really quickly. Oh, he doesn't shoot back. Nice. 
And with that, we've got him out of the game and the cap is clear, so I'm going to start pushing the enemy CV. With the Clear Skies medal under our belt, we've proved why you don't want to continue to harry a Friesland with your squadrons, and I would say this Parsevel is pretty much deplaned at this time. I think my div mates had, who knows, probably 10 to 15 planes shot down each themselves. So when talking about global XP ships, it is always a fair question to ask yourself what will you be missing out on in terms of other ships? Well, currently there's quite a lot to choose from and more being added every update. Alabama, Massachusetts, Key, Odin, Roma, Tirpitz, Monarch, Gascon, Champagne. These are going to be some of the battleships that you can choose from currently. Again, more coming. Cruisers would include the Atlanta, I think still for 500,000 global XP. Otago, Prince, Eugen, Suzuya, Azuma, Krasny, Krim, and the Stalingrad. And of course, we know the Stalingrad is 2 million global XP. So if you spend money on this ship, you are shorting yourself to getting to the Stalingrad by quite a bit. Now, what you might be interested in if you're looking at the Friesland is the global XP destroyers, in which case you are only going to have the Benham, the Tier 6 American DD, the Palo Emilio, the Italian DD at Tier 7, and then, of course, the Friesland here. I don't think that I'm missing anything. I think the Loyang was a global XP destroyer, but only temporarily. And, of course, new DDs could be added down the line, so there's the possibility of, you know, just in the next update, uh, another DD to consider. The Palo Emilio. It's a destroyer that I don't have, but it is very unique with a massive HP pool, high top speed, and a rolling smoke generator. I would without a doubt say the Friesland's probably the more competitive boat, but Paolo or the Olo Emilio offer some unique gameplay style as well. So at this point in the game, we have moved up and are attacking the enemy Parseval, and that's when my div mate is yelling in my ear that there is a Friesland behind me as well. So we immediately start smoking up. And it looks like he similarly has very little health. It's going to come down to basically who lands two shells. <laughs> so we back up in our smoke screen. He hits me with one. So I'm essentially one shot. And we're going to see if we can't get him off the board so that I can continue farming the enemy aircraft carrier. While we back up and see how that plays out. My final opinion, the Friesland is a blast. It definitely offers something different for you to try out. And now with more pan-European commanders entering the game, you have more options than ever before. So if this looks like something you would be interested in, absolutely go and check it out. Now the enemy Friesland misses a couple salvos. And with that, I think I can trick him into uh, having both of my guns on him him only having one gun on me and we'll see if I can get him off the board and survive that's the trick we do gun him down but his last salvo finishes me off and the enemy aircraft carrier is spared sadly <laughs> now this game isn't over we really need our blues to come in here and just kill the Zara that would give us a big enough point swing to stay in the match. And with that, let's listen into the live comms and see how this one plays out. Come on, Kansas. If you do not kill this um, guy, I'm going to send you a message. Oh my god, he missed. But the Kaga's probably going to hit him. Yes. Yes. The Kaga's going to hit him. No, no, he's not. He's going to oh, touch him. Wait, 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 wait. On the ass. Yes. Oh my god, what a clutch. Oh my god. <laughs> and that's a win. Final word on Friesland. If you like to play gunboats, there isn't a more gunboaty gunboat in the game. And as most of our player base doesn't like CVs, this ship will be the biggest pain in the backside for an enemy carrier. So think about that. When it comes to your destroyer choices, I would say Friesland is at the moment my number one choice for 750k global XP as destroyers go. I am of course curious what you guys think about the Friesland. If you're considering her, if you didn't already get her back in the fall, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Also, be sure to smash the thumbs up button as it greatly helps promote our channel. And finally, before you go, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right, catch you in the next one. See ya.